hello hello we got season 5 uh, patch notes I can say that right now that basically the season 5 meta is gonna be exactly the same as season 4 as there was no nerfs to any of the big skills like frost strike crescent slash even shadow links are still really strong it was just memes they didn't do anything about those so meta is gonna be really similar you, we might see like maybe two or three skills that's gonna be something new but it's too early to say and uh, by the way i'm gonna stream that tomorrow on twitch whenever i come back from work i'm gonna blast on hardcore gonna gacha my all my rubies that i made in season four so if you're interested join me tomorrow but right now this is on five update i'm gonna skip out of stuff i'm just gonna keep it really short and i'm gonna keep it to the point so season five challenge we get a new costume that's called ancient priest that's nice after that the biggest one is that they decreased how many rune master levels you need to unlock the skill board so it was 50 previous right now it starts with two and increases every single level increases by two right so that means you're gonna be able to open some extra skill board slots without having like 200 rune mastery level that's nice stuff then we have the new episode custodia two boss monsters not a big deal act 14 just more campaign that means more time in the campaign and at the same time we get a new field event called ancient beating purification if it's hard to understand what this field event is the same as those uh, portals or the same as veins for the Yunos dungeons, right? So basically on the chaos, when you do chaos statue, you have a chance for the strange megalith to appear. Whenever you proc that megalith, you, you're gonna be start spawning a ancient monsters. And by killing those ancient monsters, you're gonna fill up the energies, specific energies. And whenever that energy reach, reaches 100, danger level is gonna increase by one. And max danger level is three. And what danger level means, the higher danger level, the better Custodia cards you can drop, Exodium cards. So it's really simple. The Exodium dungeon itself, it's kind of an interesting one. It says there is seven different island locations and you need to clear those locations. And when you clear those locations and you move through the islands, you're gonna be able to find monster statues. And when you summon those monsters from the statues, it increases your overall clear because at the last map, at the seventh island, there is a temple altar. And basically the temple altar is gonna summon the monsters based on the types of monsters defeated on previous islands so basically what it means you don't want to skip anything you want to clear as much as you can otherwise you're gonna lose on the loot that's the main idea and basically by defeating the exodium dungeon boss you have a chance to drop greater exodium card and that greater exodium card is so called yube unique boss that has a chance to drop innate unique gear After that, it's simple stuff. The Season 5 Unique Gear is only gonna drop in Hardcore mode, and Season 4 Unique Gear is gonna drop in Standard mode. Some attendance bullshit, just extra, extra way, extra pay to win basically. Descent Guild Raid, Solo Descent, basically map level right now is 165 max. That's the main takeaway point. They changed the Constellation Shop, but that's not a big change, it's just renames. And on the Traces of Memory cards right now, at level 35, debuff skill rune effect is 150 instead of 250. So they, it's going to be easier to clear those Traces of Memory cards. I'm skipping a lot of stuff because it's a really simple one. This is the rewards basically. Whenever you clear Chaos Dungeon, you open up a reward and you can receive that reward. Not a big deal. And this is the Chaos Runes basically. It costs, whenever you clear a Chaos Statue right now, Chaos Statue map, you're gonna get those Chaos Points. And with those Chaos Points, you can choose whichever event you want to do on your map. But only one event on one map. Right? And then they show that there is a hard difficulty cards. Basically, only legendary cards and highest can be done on hard difficulty. You can't do legendary cards on normal difficulty anymore. That's the main idea. 
the, this is the Rune Hunter Resolve event, but it only starts on August 15, that means extra Chaos Touch XP. And if you blast on the season start, you're not gonna get any. Then there is energy changes, which is a big deal. Energies right now, it's gonna be really hard to balance. It's really, because the problem with energies right now is that you get, they change it. So for example, Earth Energy gives you damage upon attack, but at the same time, it gives you damage upon spell and it's minus 10. So you have to be careful when you choose, choose those energies. Lightning energy is nice only early into the game when you don't have any maximize chance. At the same time, you can do cold energies if you do a maximize build and you use Persistent Slink Rune. And poison energies is nice if you can maintain your resource cost. But I would say in general, energies right now are not good. It's really hard to make those work. Uh, what they're saying right now that champions, they were basically meme because you could CC the champion and it was not dealing any damage to you. But what they did, right now they are actually immune to status effects. So champions are going to be really hard on hardcore mode. Got to be careful right now. That's the biggest, biggest change. Then they're showing how they switched the alchemy table. I'm not going to get too deep into this. It's just some... they basically clearing all the redundant stuff. Then they change Alchemy Mastery, but those changes are not big. It, it's not gonna matter in any sense. The only big change I can tell is that there is no more formula pages. You can craft those orbs just by default. You don't need any formula books right now, which is a big deal. Disassembling stuff, I'm not gonna get too far into this. There is not enough info. But basically, you want to disassemble everything. You want to loot everything, disassemble everything, and just buy the items from the disassemble shop. That's the main takeaway. And the gear, basically we have tier 35 gear right now and tier 14 affixes, which is nice. I don't know if we have a tier 10 charms yet. I'm gonna know that tomorrow. Then there is set items. The problem is that it's gonna be really hard to get one type of set just because you can get those set effects at random. So that's, if you hunt for the set effects, it's gonna take you some time. Then they add new room stones, not a big deal, doesn't matter. Mm, by the way, you can use quality and the modification essences on any on any grade right now, and they're adjusting the chances to get that. So probably, the higher grade you have, the harder it's gonna be to get a twenty percent quality. Another thing is that concerns Chaos Statue hard mode. That right now, you're not gonna be immune to status effects because you can roll remove immunity to bleed, for example, and this is basically a really big deal. People are gonna die quite a lot. For example, immune to wound on high level chaos statues and on the hard mode is gonna deal so much damage. It's gonna it's gonna be a clown fiesta, I can tell you that right now. So this is unique gear, I can show that a little bit later. Alchemy changes, they remove the star progression and gear grand three transfer stones, remove so some redundant powders. There is two new skills. Vision Shift, which is movement, and Wings of Ignition, which is spell. They said improvements to skill runes, but those improvements are basically, I don't know, they are just, they don't change anything, by the way. Spinning Dagger is a little, a little bit better, but still not good enough to be considered a good starter. Or at least the skill that you want to push maps on. Improvements to Link runes, does matter. Balance changes, most of these are actually nerfs. Charge release got nerfed, Thorn Explosion got nerfed, Verbant got nerfed if you are doing um, trigger. If you are triggering it with like some charge release or something, it got nerfed by quite a bit. Verbant Slash right now has a capped projectile count, still gonna slap, still gonna do trillions of damage. Quick Slash got a nice buff. I'm probably gonna start Quick Slash, at least gonna try it. I'm skipping everything else. Like th there was no no decent nerfs in here. Yeah, zodiac changes doesn't matter. Basically, the main zodiac changes, normal zodiac changes, concerns that they removed uh, a little bit of weapon range flat and area effect flat. That's the main idea. But at the same time, they give you a little bit more damage. So I wouldn't say it's a big nerf. It because you're still gonna be able to scale that area effect or weapon range really easy. I'm gonna skip over the the later ones. Doesn't matter. Another big change is that Enchant right now costs gold. That's a big L. I don't know why they did it. And the prices are insane. I'm gonna get into that. I I'm so mad. I, I don't wanna talk about that. 
Yeah, and costumes, 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 bullshit, 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 pay to win, pay to win, more pay to win, and we got a discount for the storages. That's bit ba that's basically the best change they did. Okay, let's get over to the uniques. So on the unique side, I can tell you that there are no crazy uniques that like the last time, but I'm gonna explain some of those. So for example, primal synchronization is really nice if you're using chain chain skill. It adds quite a bit of damage and extra chain count. It works on quick slash, but only when in Lacrima. Uh, another big thing is it's parallel gauntlets, but those are for the minions. Septa consistence is nice for Frostball, but I don't know if you can scale Frostball damage that much. My idea is Wings of Ignition plus Frostball with Septa consistence. Could be a nice meme build. Nothing too crazy, just a meme build. Longbow is for the Ice Arrow. I, I don't suggest to do Ice Arrow unless this thing is broken. Mm, Vespa Venom Fang is nice if you want to do Deadly Poison Skiva. Interaction can be a little bit weird, this needs some testing, but Vespa Venom Fang is not a bad idea. Afro's Whale, I have nothing good to say about that. Rain of Consecration is just Twisted Abyss Link movement speed. I'm gonna skip over that. Perpetual Orbit is can be really nice on Earth Blow build, because it you get max maintain position stacks. So this could be good that on the builds that can use maintain position stacks, and one of those is Earth Blow. Then the transcendent versions, the same stuff, same stuff. Uh, there is a Levels Flow, basically Lightning Wave. Lightning energies are not consumed, but you get Lightning Wave damage damping. I don't know how good that's gonna be, this needs testing, but keep an eye on that one. Afros Veil, I don't know, it's not bad. You could use it, you could make, make use of it. Mm. Aquila Resonance, I wouldn't say it's nothing crazy. If you're doing some spells build, spell builds, maybe, but otherwise, nothing too crazy. Alyssa Aurora, another minion stuff. Hamal Verdancy, I would say this is the best global unique that everyone can use, and those are gloves with chance to deal double and triple maximize. This is quite a bit of damage, by the way. With maximize damage multiplier, this is probably the best unique for every single build. Everything else, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip. Uh, Teneo, I think this Teneos is from the Yuba Unique. Only from the Yuba Uniques, if I rem if I... At least that's how I understand it. It's not a bad sword, but I don't know on how many builds you can make it work. Abyss Mask, nothing too crazy. Necklace, Necklace is an interesting one. You summon some kind of orbs and you need to pick those up. I don't know how viable it's gonna be on the, on the maps. Overture of Grace. Another one, a belt just with a damage jump, nothing too crazy. Enhanced potion effect is actually big if you want to grind the Rune Master XP. Because 160% is going to be quite a bit of increase, because all the Rune Mastery potions are actually enhanced potions. And gold coin of the beginnings, it's just extra item drop rarity and Rune Master XP, nothing too crazy. Uh, I can show you some of the stupid things that they did. I'm not gonna get into everything, but for example, Whirlwind right now. So, Whirlwind was bugged a little bit. It was doing too many damage, too many ticks of damages. So, what they did, they fixed that, but they increased the flat and the multiplier. It got increased by twice or even more. But at the same time, they added 30% trigger skill rune dampening. Which means, they made it worse if you want to do a trigger skills. For example, Whirlwind plus Thorn Explosion. It's way worse right now. I don't know why they did that, but I think Brilvin got the biggest change. Spinning Daga is not bad one, but I don't know how good it's gonna be. It, it's not too crazy. The, the tooltip is still the same, it's just the awakening difference and you get projectile count right now. Yeah, everything else is the same. And Shadow Warrior nerf is 25% damage multiplier, which on your damage it's gonna be sub 1 million percent. It's gonna be 0.0001 percent damage difference because of this. It's not even a nerf. Yeah, but basically this is everything I wanted to talk about. We still don't know about item charms. We still don't We still don't see the T35 uh, basis. Maybe they did something with the uh, basis of the items themselves. But basically this is it. This is everything I want to talk about. 
I sk I skipped over a lot of stuff, but just I don't I don't I don't think if it was necessary to talk about. And yeah, geez, and see you guys tomorrow on the launch. Have a nice day.